yo, this capture card has absolutely zero business being this small. <laughs> it's tiny. Dude, it's tiny. I love it. This here is the Livestreamer 4K capture card released recently by Aver Media. This capture card has some pretty gnarly features. Not only does it have a sweet set of specifications, it comes in at a gnarly price of 100 US dollars, making this, in my opinion, one of the most cost-effective DSLR camera capture cards that you can get right now. It is my personal belief that uh, Aver Media released this capture card in design or in competition with that Elgato cam link that everyone's so familiar with. This capture card here is supposed to be plug and play. It it works with a USB type C that you plug directly into your computer and an HDMI that you plug your DSLR camera into. Alongside the release of this capture card, Avermedia released some cool features being added to their cam engine. They're adding EPTZ slash AI framing into their cam engine so you can have what they call a personal cameraman uh, from the cam engine. I'm excited to set up my DSLR camera in this video with this capture card, taking a look at how good this capture card is as far as uh, capturing colors and latency and all those things in comparison to my Blackmagic Designs 4K capture card, which is internally in my PC right now, which I'm using to record this video as we speak. But first and foremost, let's take a look at those beautiful specifications. The Livestreamer Cap 4K comes with an HDMI port, an LED indicator and a USB Type-C port. This works on a USB 3.0. The max supported resolutions are 2160p at 60 HDR, 1440p at 144, or 1080p at 60. Max recording resolutions is 2160p at 30 and 1080p 60 HDR. It's compatible with 48 kilohertz PCM over HDMI. The specifications on this capture card make it sound really, really enticing. I'm excited to to start setting it up so we can get a real look at how well this performs at those specific specifications and then also taking a look at that cam engine so that we can see what kind of new tools Avermedia is trying to create for us. Let's jump into it. First and foremost, let's get this bad boy set up. So what we'll do is take the USB-C end of this USB cable and plug that into the capture card. And then we will take the USB-3 and plug that into our desktop. We'll want to make sure this isn't connected to a 3.0 port um, because it does require it to be a USB 3. Otherwise, you will get an error indicated on the LED here. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right, so what I've done is plug this into my USB 3. There are four different lights with this capture card that will indicate some sort of thing happening. So if you have a solid blue light, that would mean it is powered on. If you have a solid red light like I have right now, it means that there is no input. I don't have anything hooked up to the HDMI end of this capture card, so there is no input. If it is flashing blue, that means it's booting up or it's installing some sort of firmware. If it's flashing red, that's how you know you have an error uh, with the USB port that you plug this capture card into. Like I said, it needs to be in a USB 3 port. Otherwise, this capture card will not work. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is switch the DSLR camera that I'm using over to this capture card, and uh, we'll see how it looks with the same exact settings that it has right now. So when you first get your live streamer cap 4K setup or any Avermedia capture card for that matter, you're going to want to go to avermedia.com, go to that product, and then scroll all the way down on that product listing. And we're gonna go ahead and download this download manager or assist central, which will help us find software that we need on our computer. Uh, for instance, we need the live streamer cap 4K drivers and these two applications that I have checked. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once everything's downloaded, what we're gonna do is open up RE Central. RE Central is actually really cool. It's Aver Media's version of OBS. Although I still suggest OBS, there are some cool features on RE Central, one being the output to multiple locations, which is very cool. However, it's hard to be OBS with all the OBS plugins and that stuff. So yeah, 
anyways after you have those three things installed we're going to open up re central we're going to go to the capture device here live streamer cap 4k we're going to make sure the device is set up properly it says device is being used by another app application that is obs so in a second here, I'm going to go over to OBS and make sure everything is set up correctly. However, I'm very, very happy to see decode format YUY2. This is going to be very good for color retention. Very excited to see that as it will be a, a four by two by two, which is fantastic. So let's go over to OBS. What we're going to do here is see if this is set up or not. Looks like I need to close out of this and make sure I have everything set up with the capture card first. So let me stop recording and we'll come back. All right, so uh, I had to make a few changes. I don't know that I had to. Let me see real quick. My assumption was right. I was actually recording at 24 frames on the camera. I had to set it to 30 frames in order for the capture card to recognize it within OBS. But this is what it looks like on the live streamer 4K. I'm impressed. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm not yanking your chain. Uh, I did, in fact, get this set up within OBS. This is the live streamer cap 4K. I'm noticing that the uh, interlacing happening here, this could just be a frame issue, is a little bit more prominent. Uh, I don't know if it's the capture card per se or the framing issue, but it is interesting to see that this interlacing is popping up and I'm seeing more of it. Anyway, pretty sick. Let's do a healthy little side-by-side -side comparison of both capture cards, which uh, Blackmagic Design capture card, which is what I consider the most accurate as far as color retention goes and capturing the actual video feed. And the Livestreamer Cap 4K will do a little side-by-side -side and uh, see how they compare against each other. There are a few things that I want to make note of with those two recordings, specifically what I can see at just a quick glance. One is this issue with interlacing. That could just be the fact that internally with the camera, I'm having to do 30 frames instead of 24 frames. But more importantly, the darker or the black colors with the AV Meteor capture card are less black than the Blackmagic Designs capture card which kind of changes uh, the color retention value of it. However, I do want to say that I am impressed by how well the Avermedia capture card is keeping up with the internal Blackmagic Designs capture card as far as colors and all of that goes. So last thing I want to do is take a look at Cam Engine and look at some of the functionalities built in there. All right, so... I've selected my device and it shows up in Cam Engine. So the kind of the hype built around this app is the fact that it has some cool filters, effects and stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at what those are and what that means for us as Avermedia Capture Card users. So we have a layout tab here, which will change the layout. Oh, I'm assuming that we can use this for uh, different scenes and stuff, which is cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, so next, we're going to look at the filters. I'll go ahead and enable that. If I slide up the smoothing, um, it looks like it's smoothing out my skin. I don't know if that's just the processing on the app that's making it look kind of weird or... Um, if that's what it's actually doing to the uh, footage there, which actually it kind of makes like an interesting look like that smooth, like it looks like an Instagram filter in a sense, which is kind of cool. And the skin tone is just going to adjust like the blacks and the shadows and the whites and that sort of thing uh, in the image, which is kind of interesting. Pretty cool. Um, here we have effects, which seems dope. We can download effects. So I'm going to make sure I'm downloading that real quick. Um, Yo, I'm sorry, but this is dope. This is like Snapcam, but like a whole different level because I can actually use it on my DSLR camera. I didn't realize how big of a deal this is. If they continue to develop this stuff and create sick features, this is dope, dude. This is dope. Last thing I got to look at is this AI stuff. It looks like I have to log in to do that. So let me do that real quick. All right, cool. So I've logged in here. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see what this is because I don't know what it means. AI framing, EPTZ. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. 
This is cool. However, how do I... There we go. There we go. Oh, and it's smooth as butter, the transition. Hold on. Hold on. Guys, we should have looked at this first because this is the coolest shit of the app right here. All right, so why I'm freaking out about this is one, not only are these scenes cool, right? Because you can kind of change it up. Um, if you're live streaming, this is a big deal because with Touch Portal or a Stream Deck or some sort of macro deck like the Iron Board, you can set up these keybinds to be used um, with those those macro decks so that you can create cool uh, effects while you're live streaming like zooming in uh, panning can happen uh, from this which is very very cool like I'm super pumped about that okay it doesn't look like there's any way to hotkey these effects Avermedia and Avermedia team get on creating hotkeys for these effects it's very important so that when we're live streaming we can quickly access the effect that we want so we're going to go back to OBS because I believe there's a way I can input uh, that cam engine video feed into OBS. And there is. That's exactly what I just did. Just so you guys know, now I'm recording from the Avermedia cam engine virtual camera. It creates a virtual camera just like the virtual camera within OBS. Very cool function. And that's what you're seeing on the screen here. However, I would like to figure out how to reset the size of this oh okay there it is so the downside of the cam engine however is it's recording in 1080p therefore if you're recording in 4k which you, i don't think you'll ever be streaming in 4k so you shouldn't have that issue uh, but if you're using the uh, cam engine to record videos you're not going to be able to do that in 4k so you should just input that straight into obs Anyways, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun recording this, taking a look at the Cam Engine software and all that stuff. I think from this first look, and keep in mind, guys, I don't have a ton of experience when it comes to capture cards. I have experience with the Live Gamer 4K. I have the I have experience with the Live Gamer Duo. I have experience with two Black Magic Designs capture cards, and then now this uh, Live streamer capture card 4k so keep in mind i'm still quite a beginner so to speak but i do have some valuable information and i hope that you learned a thing or two or uh you found some cool information regarding this new capture card if you guys enjoyed this video hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for more content like this i want to thank you so much for watching this video i had a lot of fun in this one and i will catch you in the next one peace out broskies